Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Toll Files. Once again, we're here outside Boulder Denver Couriers and being joined today by Brooke Watts. Brooke, uh, first off, fantastic job at the Tour of Missouri. I think that you have to say on every metric, that event really came off as a total success. <laughs> to give people a little bit of background on you, you've yeah. been involved with the sport for really coming on three decades at this point, going all the way back. Is it Tour of Texas where you really got your start? Well, Tour of Texas was some of the first events that I worked on. Uh, preceding that, I did uh, Cyclocross National Championships, 1979 in Austin, Texas. As a racer? No, no, no. Oh, I really? recognize that. We had uh, 16 guys on the line, and back in those days, you had <laughs> one category. Did Lawrence Malone win? He won that year. Yeah. Absolutely. John Howard, the local favorite, was uh, third, I believe. Right. Yeah. And so then, I mean, and then you really have been involved in, you know, going back, it really reads like a who's who of American great races because we, you, uh, Tour of Texas was really kind of pivotal as a spring yeah. series going back to the day. Coors yeah. Classic, you're involved with that? No, race? actually, I would no. come up to the Coors as a spectator. Right. But then you were involved with Tour de Pont. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Was... Well, uh, and, and the predecessor, Tour de Trump. Right. Two years of Tour de Trump, then that rolled right into Tour de Pont. I missed a few years, thought I needed to get a corporate job. I got real smart. They downsized yeah. me. Then I got right back in the sport. And so, and then, so now, then we're talking about the medalist events for the most part, along yeah. with the work you're doing for Cross Vegas, and that's part of what we're going to talk about today. But I mean, it, it, it really has been incredible the way the sport has picked up some serious momentum here over the last couple of years. Between Tour de Georgia, which has sort of been, you know, static, a great event, and sure. then Tour of California came out of nowhere, and I think that really blew some minds, didn't oh, it? Oh well, absolutely. When you get an organization like AEG behind yeah. it, uh, they've got some incredible resources, and I don't mean just financial resources but they've got a way of energizing people and, and getting the crowds out there it makes a big difference then you've got the Georgia and Missouri models which are this public private partnership right. we've got the state who understands that uh, this helps drive tourism helps drive economic development that people in other countries who might be looking for a US location say wow there's a lot going on in Georgia or there's a lot going on sure. in Missouri we should think about that as a place to do business. What kind of feedback did you get from the Missouri folks after the race? Oh, they're, they're just so stoked about it. Great. That's, that's all I can say. It's just been incredible. In the, pro, in the final press conference, the, both the, the governor of Missouri and the lieutenant governor were both saying, this is going to happen next year. Great. You know, they're, they're guarded in their comments, of course. We've got to go back and look at the numbers, et cetera, et cetera. But there's just no doubt that this thing is happening again. Yeah, we saw Governor Matt Blunt and uh, Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder were at just about every stage. That's exactly right. And it, it's certainly, it's interesting because when you look at it in the room for growth and, and uh, you know, on all those metrics, California is a place that's known around the world. And, and obviously, uh, people, you know, love California and the culture that they've created there. Missouri, on the other hand, was sort of an unknown, I think, especially for the Europeans and the Asians that were tuning in on the World Wide Web. That's but true. the growth opportunity for them as far as tourism, this is perfect, isn't it? It, it really is. And its placement in the calendar and that mm -hmm. September time frame is just ideal. And I think what, what so many people underestimated is the number of cycling enthusiasts who reside in Missouri. I mean, how many yeah. you know, cycling kits did you see out there, guys who came to the races, all races, not just the metro areas, but all of the stages, riders out there riding the courses, and it just shows that that, that heartland of America is really a hotbed of cycling. Clearly underserved. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. now, yeah. uh, well, you know, I'm, so people are probably wondering, well, exactly what do you do? So I know it's probably hard to put yeah. that in less than a thousand words, but when you're at, and it's certainly it's different before the event is when yeah. you're at the event, but take me through a little bit of both of those. Pre well, I'll start pre-race, right? and, and most of my activities pre-race are developing promotions, mm -hmm. whether that's uh, radio promotions to help drive spectators out there, whether it's developing print promotions. We had a special section in the St. Louis newspaper, a special section in the Kansas City paper. You also had a handout that went to every uh, elementary and junior high school the student in the state. The educational curriculum, yeah. yeah. That was a model that started years ago with the Tour de Pont, where we would identify elementary schools along the route, provide those school districts with, uh, with a curriculum guide, and so you're talking about geography in cycling terms. You're talking about mathematics in cycling terms. Same thing with science, right. and social studies, on and on and on. There, I mean, so the bike does stuff. have so many incredible oh, tie-ins. That's just perfect. It is, it is. And then the, the kids would then come out with their handmade signs, 
they would, they would study geography, so each class might take a different country uh -huh. and look for the, the writers from that country. It was just a, a, a great program. So that's part of what I do. In the so then, so then, once the race starts, I mean, we always see you, you know, around the start finish area, getting yeah. riders to interviews, and that looks like it's a big part of what you do. I always know when I see you after the race that probably Ivan Dominguez is going to be right with you, and I'll get <laughs> well, my chance to do yeah, an interview. That's so true. Well, it, it's really broken down. You got the pre-race and, and the, the need to get those photographers on the motorcycles so they can get the images out to the world, dealing with any uh, credential needs. And then you've got the post race, and, and that's where you see me most monitoring the radio, trying to figure out who the most aggressive rider doing that poll among the media. And then as soon as the race is over, trying to get those guys to award ceremonies and finally to a press conference. And once the press conference is done, you're back to the media workroom where you're taking care of the needs of these various media members, whatever they might need. Hey, I want an interview with so and so. So you're talking to a team director, trying to set those things up. Honestly, next to the Swan years, we work the longest days. I'd have to say so, and you have yeah. to deal with those uh, crazies like Neil Rogers from Velo News. Yeah, you? yeah, Neil's right up there. Very <laughs> So, uh, you know, another thing that I've noticed that I, I think that is really critical in your job is you'll have, let's say, someone, there's a, a great rider, Bill, from the Kansas City Star, that, right. that he shows up at the event and he doesn't really know who to talk to or That's where right. to go. So you connect him with people, sure. you know, you find out what his story interest is That's and then right. get him people that can give him good quotes and good background information. Yeah, that, that's true because you've, you've got guys who are cycling specific and then you've got guys who are great riders, great sports riders, and they need yeah, just right. a little bit of education and suddenly they're hooked on the sport at the end of one stage this guy you're talking and about the quality of the sport. articles are incredible when it goes up like this absolutely it's yeah. interesting when you can walk him over and say here's the guy you want to talk to he, he's got the answer mm -hmm. to what you need yeah, I mean, like a, someone like Neil Rogers, like we're just joking around, as obviously Neil is here joining us today, yeah, but yeah. someone like Neil from Vellon is already knows who he wants to talk to. He's sure. very, you know, familiar with the, with the nuances of this board, yeah. and he's got like story ideas. What do you do for someone like that, or Mark Zelowski from Cycling News? What, what do they need, or well, do they need anything? No, they, you know, they're, they're very much on their own. They, right. uh, you know, sometimes they need some clarification, and I can be the bridge between them and the race organization to, to get an answer to a specific question, what happened on the stage today you know what's what's the answer to this or that right but it's really taking those uh, those rookies and, and taking them by the hand and and it's kind of fun to watch I mean it's real fun to watch someone who knows nothing about cycling and to see them on day one and you think holy smokes I gotta go right. through this and then by stage six you know they're they're right there hey this is great they're totally hooked and you know they're going back to their editor saying next time you've got a cycling story give it to me so, Brooke, right now we're sitting one week away from Cross Vegas coming yeah. up, and the, the pre-publicity has been phenomenal. How long have you been working on the event? Oh, well, you know what happened? Last year we did the Boulder Cup in November. Chris Grealish, uh, that's, that's his baby. I came in and helped him with a little PR. And, and about two days after the race, he says, Brooke, I've got this idea. What if we do a race out in, in Las Vegas? I said, Chris, you're the man. You know, yeah. If anyone can make it happen, you will, and I'll, I'll follow you to the depths. So, uh, so that's when it started. You know, we made our exploratory trips out there, got the process going, and, and then as soon as you know you've got the venue and you've got a race in place, that's when the promotions, the, the sponsorship sales, all that starts right then. And, you know, it looks like there's been a lot of just, you know, the groundswell has been incredible. Obviously, Valon has got on board early and they've yeah, been very yeah, supportive. Great partner. Yeah, and so how has it been in the cycling industry? Are people, are, you know, as stoked as I would hope they'd be that we finally oh, have think, bike racing? I don't think bike? there's any doubt. I'm, I'm among what, you know, we jokingly call them the shop rats, you uh -huh. know, and gosh, I was one for many years. All through high school, I worked in bike shops lived and breathed cycling and so if you're one of those guys you get a chance to go to Las Vegas that's number one but then while in Las Vegas get a chance to see what could very well be the strongest field of cross racers men and women in in the United States this cross season hands down the chance to get to see those guys you know, that's pretty hard to beat. I mean, that's fair to say because and part of that is the draw that so many riders are there for their sponsors yeah. already in Las Vegas. And now what a great opportunity for them well, to stretch and, the legs and, exactly. and see where the fitness is at. And you've got the internationals who are there who will, would not be at our national championships. So honestly, I'm, I'm not big on hype, even though I'm a marketing guy. I try to keep it pretty close. You're going to say the strongest field we'll see in America yeah, this year. Yeah, I think so. Because I some people so. might say, "Well, what about nationals?" And then you could say, "Well, you're not going to have the international contingent." 
Americans are there. It's only Americans. Sure. I would have to sure. agree with you, and yeah. certainly uh, it's going to be a great field. You know, it's, it's absolutely going to be a stunning so, field. You've heard Chris talk about who the who the standouts are. What I about Sven Nice? Theory. What's it going to take to get that guy over here? You know, it's not going to take much. You know, you talk to him in Ireland. Uh -huh. He wants to come over here. Robo Bank has big business interests here in the United States. I think it's just going to take a slight nudge, and I've got a feeling that seeing the results of 2007, he'll be here in 2008. Well, Brooke, we wish you uh, good luck with uh, Excel Sports Cross Vegas coming Thanks, up. And certainly I know all the hard work is going to come to fruition just one week from now. It's going to be a blast. Right on. Well, we'll look forward to seeing everyone there. And so for Brooke Watts, I'm Dave Toll saying we'll see you at Cross Vegas.